All right, so the purpose of this quiz is for you to get an idea of the, the re reasoning behind... It's frozen. It's frozen, yes, sorry, guys. The reason behind um, the answers, how you re reason your way through these answers. So I want you to take a moment to write the, the answers down on your own, and then we'll talk through the answers. So, wait, wait, wait. These, you don't need to write the title down, okay? Page 27, it's a left-hand page. You're going to flip up the little half sheet and you're going to put your answers down there. Other question? Um, do you like say the answers out loud? Don't say the answers out loud. You're just writing these answers down and then we're going to talk about them. The half sheet for connective tissue is going to get taped onto page 27 as well. But you still have a clean piece of, piece of notebook paper where you can write the answers. <laughs> okay. The muscle and nerve tissue handout is going to go on page 29. The half sheet that you just picked up today. No, not that paper. The half sheet. So when you start coming into the classroom, you will notice that on the end of that metal cart there, there is a little piece of paper that says anatomy handouts with an arrow pointing up. There's also a piece of paper there that says biology handouts. You're in anatomy. You take the anatomy handout. Yes, it was. <laughs> I just put the sign up there last night. Okay. So, now that you've had an opportunity to look at this tissue, you see the arrow that's pointing to a layer of tissues. You should know that this is an epithelial tissue. Why do you know it's epithelial? Because you see a free apical surface here, and then you see some other kind of tissue down below. What we're specifically looking at is a nucleus here, a nucleus here, a nucleus here. What's the shape of that nucleus? It's squished. And it's only one layer of cells. So the answer should be simple squamous. Okay? Now, if you were unfamiliar with what simple squamous should look like, you're going to go and you're going to... Write that down, simple squamous, or rewatch this video, and make sure that you know what all of these tissues look like. For your test on Monday, I will, it'll be on Socrative, I will put up a picture of a tissue type, and then you will have the entire list of all the tissues that you're required to know. So it's matching, it's not just multiple choice, it's matching and you're going to have to be able to recognize all of those tissues. It's not gonna be like process of elimination, there's only four. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it, it ups the challenge of the quiz. Okay, here's our next one. Identify this tissue. Take a second, if you're watching at home again, you're gonna pause the video at this point. For those of you who are live right now in class, that should be about enough time for you to look. I will start kind of helping you. We see a free apical surface. We see a layer that is attached to some other type of tissue below. The next thing I go, okay, this is a clearly an epithelial tissue. Now I start looking at the shapes of my nuclei. Okay, so we see a nice layer here of nicely lined up nuclei. So the fact that these nuclei are really all lined up in one row, this is telling me that how many layers am I dealing with? One, one layer. Look at the shape of the nuclei. They're tall and skinny, so this is going to be simple columnar. Okay, next. That was simple columnar. Now I'm gonna pull up different pictures of these. You may not, you may see these same slides again, you may see different pictures. So if you need a minute, you pause the video, back up. First of all, I'm looking at this, I clearly see that it is what type of tissue? No, not the name of the tissue, what type? There are four tissue types. This is clearly an epithelial tissue because, oops, sorry because we have a, a free apical surface. It's attached down here to something else. So this is an epithelial tissue. What kind of epithelial tissue? 
Pseudo stratified. How do you know? Okay, so we see kind of tall, skinny-ish looking cells, but we see a nuclei up here, a nuclei down here, a nuclei down here. Can you see where I'm circling the nuclei? Yes. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't come out really great. The nucleus, yeah. nucleus, these dark circles down here. And it looks like, you know, you have some nuclei up here, but then some are down here. And do you see the overall kind of columnar shape of the cells? Yeah. Now, then you go, okay, wait. It looks like I have more than one layer of cells. But I remember Ms. Zitterkoff saying that stratified columnar is like only in one place. And that's not on our list of what we need to know. I also see this fuzzy stuff on the surface. Oh, I know. The only cell tissue, uh, cell type that we have that has this fuzzy stuff is pseudostratified columnar. So that's your answer. And this fuzzy stuff on the surface is cilia. So I'm trying to get you guys to, to look at these slides the way I do when I'm reasoning my way through trying to figure out what tissue type I'm, I'm dealing with. Okay, pause your video, what it is. Okay, first of all, you know this is what category of tissues? Epithelial, oh, God, I keep doing that. I forget to hit the pen. Um, epithelial, because we have a free apical surface and we have this layer down here, which brings me to number six. What is this layer called? Basement, Basement layer. Okay. So what kind of tissue is it? Is it one layer or multiple layers? Multiple, multiple layers. So you know it has to be a stratified something. Now, when we have multiple layers, remember I told you that the nucleus is not going to have its correct shape until you get to the apical surface. At the apical surface, we have a squished nucleus. Therefore, it's a stratified squamous. Okay. Now, last period, someone said, oh, I thought it might be tra stratified transitional, but stretched. I'm not going to give you a stretched tra stratified transitional. That would be too hard for you. I would only give you a relaxed stratified transitional transitional because it has that really characteristic bumpy surface. Good? Okay. Because again, I'm not trying to trick you. We're just taking baby steps on learning histology. All right, these are two fill-ins. Okay, epithelium that occurs in a single layer is called? Simple. Okay. So simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar. Epithelium that stretches and relaxes transitional. is transitional. And really it's called stratified transitional. That's why I, on the original quiz I had made this two points because I wanted the full name stratified transitional. All right. <clears throat> Okay, let's see if you can identify that. All right, should be easy for you. What is it? And I'm talking about this. Adipose. Okay. This is over here is a jumble of connective tissues and epithelial tissues. So I would make sure that you were identified, you know, alerted to looking at this. How do you know it's epi or how do you know that it's adipose? It has this, okay, adipose is fat, but you don't know that that's fat. You know it's adipose or fat tissue because of this honeycomb shape, this bubbly kind of appearance, the big, big cells with the tiny nuclei that are smushed over in the corners. That's how you know it's adipose. You can't see the fat. You can't see the lipid. This one should be easy. Okay, all of this together is what kind of tissue? This is blood. Specifically, this cell here, this cell here, what are these cells? Okay, those are red blood cells. What kind of cell is this? A white blood cell. And anybody know what that is? Platelets, good. Okay.
This one was challenging for the other classes. What kind of tissue is this? Okay. Okay, right, it's dense regular. How did you identify that this is dense regular? Okay, so you see really compact, no empty spaces, and these wavy lines that run parallel to each other, right? Though, what are those parallel lines? Those are collagen fibers. Collagen is a protein. And so all of those collagen fibers running parallel to each other Okay, give this strength, and where do we find this tendons. tendons? So this is dense regular. There's also an irregular connective tissue, but the collagen fibers are running in all different directions. Remember, you're going to study not just the pictures of what I gave you in the PowerPoint, but if it's mentioned in your textbook. It's fair game. And then you're going to complete the fill-ins on this one, and then we'll come back and after I unpause the video, and I'll give you... All right, so here we go. The blank is the non-living material that surrounds chondrocytes. Matrix. Matrix, good. What type, number 14, what type of connective tissue makes up the fetal skeleton? First of all, do you know what a fetus is? Yeah. It's a baby. Okay, a baby from eight weeks after conception until birth is called a fetus. Before that, we call it an embryo. Okay, so a fetus, your skeleton didn't start out being solid bone. Okay, let's hold that off because our next unit is development. So we'll talk about babies. Okay, so. Your, your skeleton did not start out as a framework of solid bone. It started out as a framework of hyaline cartilage. And the cool part is, is that when you're born, you actually have more bones in your body than you do as an adult. And that's because bones are not completely ossified. And so it'll be chunks of bone with cartilage in between. So we count it as separate bones. Just like your skull is not completely, the bones in your skull are not completely fused together. And so you have soft spots, fontanelles. As your bones transform from cartilage into um, bone, as they ossify, we say, they ossify from the shaft, the center part, out towards the ends. And when you're still growing, the ends of your bone are still cartilage. So that's why dislocations happen more easily in kids. Breaks can happen, fractures, you can have an epiphyseal fracture, and we're gonna learn all about that when we do skeletal system. Bonus question, what is the specific name for the matrix in the blood? Plasma. That's the liquid matrix. Okay, so now hopefully after taking this quiz, you kind of have an idea of the thought process for answering these types of questions, and then maybe some ideas of where you're weak and where you're strong. This is not every single picture that we've, every single tissue type. This is not an exhaustive example list of all the tissues that you have to know, but you kind of have an, a better idea of what it's gonna look like. So imagine this quiz is on Socrative, and a question pops up, and now you have a list of every single tissue type that you had to know. Do you see the extra challenge that's gonna present with you, you with, okay? So I really recommend that you go to Google Images and you not just look up one picture of transitional, but look up multiple pictures. Look up multiple pictures of the muscle slides and things like that. I'm only able to show you one right now, just for time, okay? So I'm gonna put this up on Google Classroom and you'll be able to um, watch it again. When you see my YouTube channel, Please like and subscribe. Okay. I, I have, I should be able to go way over 200 subscribers this year, but I already have a hundred and some. And I have people that aren't even in my classes subscribing to my channel. My sister, in fact, watches them up in, in Oregon. So, Jamie, if you're watching, woohoo. So, anyways, okay. So, that's the end of this.